um, is around suicide. Um, and uh, um, I just want to quote this uh, scripture from Job, uh, Job 12, 17, and it will make um, sense soon. But basically, uh, it says, ask the animals and they will teach you. Ask the birds in the sky and they will teach you. Or the speak to the earth and it will teach you. Or let the fish in the sea inform you. What of all, all these does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this? In his hand is the life of every creature and the breath of all mankind. And so uh, this is really talking about um, our people, about Māori people, actually. Because Māori people have always been seers. They always search for the animals and the birds and the sky and the uh, the hidden things of the earth and the sea that become signs to tell them when something is good and when something is bad. And so I see this this scripture as something that um, has become a uh, a um, a life a spring of life for the situation of suicide. And here's why. Suicide is big in New Zealand, especially amongst Māori youth. And so many people are going around the country asking, what do we do with this? And the church, with the power of the Spirit, should be the answer. And uh, um, But people don't know what to do about it. The statistics are getting worse. Uh, and as much as the health system can actually, and the mental health system can help, in actual fact, uh, you're dealing with the spiritual, in the spiritual situation. So I have a friend of mine who's let me share the story. He committed suicide, young man. But while he was committing suicide, Jesus turned up to him and um, and said to him, "Well, you're not going to die today." And he was so upset. He's saying, "What? Well, why do you come to me today? Why, when I'm just about to commit suicide, why do you come to me?" And Jesus said, "Well, it's not your time." To use you, and uh, so he said, "Okay." So Jesus gave him these the gift of some birds. Okay, so these birds are native New Zealand birds, and my my young friend said, "Well, what am I meant to do with this?" Anyway, he wakes up and is in the hospital. His, his body is being pumped back to life, and um, he uh, he now has uh, uh, risen from the dead and. Uh, runs a suicide prevention um, ministry in his region that has reached hundreds of Māori families. Actually, he built, he created a whole uh, suicide prevention program based on native New Zealand birds and scripture that God has given him and revealed to him how to build and rebuild these families that live in poverty and darkness and how to move them out of the uh, miry clay into a world where they see uh, truth, where they see the light, and where they're being uh, led by the Holy Spirit. And so uh, this is a very amazing program that now in his town, they have no um, family court because there's no families going through the courts. And the police now have shut the court down and said, any family in crisis, that family goes to uh, my my brother in the Lord and his family to sort out their situations. And so uh, he now has a, um, a program that I'll just show you, which is based on the scripture, actually. Ask the animals and they will teach you. Ask the birds and they will tell you. They will tell you what? They will tell you. Uh, that the breath of life comes from who? From God. And so this is the very thing that he is teaching these uh, families that they have to move from being a moor. So on the left-hand side here, you see the, the, the moor bird. The moor bird is, is uh, dead and it lives in darkness. Uh, and many of our families, they're dead in their spirit, dead in their hearts, and they live in darkness. They never come out in the day. And he wants to move them to, he's got to shift them by uh, into the realm of the Kiwi, 
where the Kiwi bird is alive, but it still lives in darkness. And then he's going to shift these families out of their thinking from being a Kiwi to being a Pukeko, which is a bird that uh, lives in a swamp, but at least it lives in the day, but is very suspicious. And then he's going to shift it from there to a Tiake bird, and the realm of the tiaki bird is a bird that flies in the forest, but also feeds its family. So he's having to teach families from moving out of the swamp into feeding your families to the realm of the tiwaka waka. So the tiwaka waka bird is the, uh, uh, the fantail bird, uh, which is, uh, uh, you know, it, brings signs, it uh, it's flits around in twos, um, and it's kind of a playful bird. And uh, so it's brave, and uh, it's, so it's teaching new skills in these families to see, you know. Then the kahu bird has got to shift from there to the kahu bird. So the kahu bird is the, uh, the hawk, and the hawk can see for miles and miles. So at one time, these families could only see in the darkness, but now they're seeing above the canopy to see where, what their life could be, you know, uh, in the future. Uh, then uh, he shifts them to the realm of the Tuibu, where they are given a voice. Um, the voice, uh, you know, beautiful singing voice, where these young ones and their families are able to speak up, share their situations, but to share their testimonies of life. And then, then they move from that to follow the white kereru. So the kereru is, is uh, what we call the native pigeon. But there is a white uh, bird that is a, a guardian for certain families to ensure that the abundance of those birds live in the forest. But uh, that is really a picture of the Holy Spirit, uh, that, uh, that uh, the families need to have the Holy Spirit in them to be led every day, every moment of the day by the Holy Spirit, that they come out from darkness, out of the swamp, out of the forest, above so they can see everything and have a voice and be free to live a life where uh, darkness and suicide does not have a grip on their lives. And so uh, these, this is actually alive and well in... Um, uh, an area in the southern uh, Waikato King Country, and it is a uh, an amazing, amazing journey that only God has been able to pass down uh, these um, uh, ideas. Well, part of Scripture of being a peacemaker that carries the gospel into places of darkness, but into places of crisis. Uh, that uh, people may actually be come out of those situations, out of the miry clay, out of darkness, into the light uh, and of, of Christ, to be healed as families and to be healed uh, personally inside them, that they may then go as the kingdom of God, like that Marae, it's called Rangatiratanga, which is the kingdom, uh, that they may carry the kingdom in, inside of them like leaven bread, and uh, and it take it to other people that they may grow the kingdom in their own communities, and that's exactly what's happening in a number of Māori communities around the country. And so I just really thought that I would come and share this, that God is calling us into the, the ministry of reconciliation, not to sit in our churches and just uh, be... Uh, uh, pew sitters, but to actually go out there and walk in the middle of, uh, of as negotiators of peace into our families, into our communities, into our tribes, and into the land, uh, and to carry the what the gospel of peace into their lives. And so, a lot of this is going on uh, behind the scenes, um, and it is forcing a lot of us out there to reach out into areas that. Uh, Maybe the gospel used to be once, but is not is no more, or into areas where the gospel has never been. Um, and uh, so this is uh, something that I wanted to share with you that uh, would encourage you to be a peacemaker, uh, to grow to maturity as a son of God, as a, one of the children of God, uh, 
uh, because God wants to bless the peacemakers. And so um, I pray, you know, I pray today that uh, you would grow as peacemakers, that God would build a whole army of peacemakers in this generation for this time to walk the streets and walk into the homes and not be scared of the world. Uh, to overcome the world and walk in to bring the kingdom of God into the lives of wounded people, into the lives of wounded communities, into the lives of, uh, of uh, you know, the youth that are lost, and into the lives of the church, the people in the church that uh, feel uh, separated from God, that don't tell anyone. So Lord, I pray that you would uh, uh, um, raise up uh, teams of peacemakers in a time of crisis to walk through uh, and, and change the status quo uh, for that your kingdom would grow in a way that is uh, will be effective in transformation of community, not by the world's way, but by your way. Right. So uh, we pray this, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So I just want to leave that with you. If you have any questions, you can ask John, and uh, he can pass them on to me, and or he can answer them. So <laughs> I want to thank you very much for your time, and, uh, and say. Uh,